Nancy Drew, Weirdness at Waverly Academy, a story by Argelfump. Chapter 29, The Safety Hazard Supply Closet. So Izzy's your roommate, Nancy said. How's that working out for you? It's fine, Leela said. She's not the person I would have picked as my roommate, but since all the valedictorian candidates live in the same hall, that's how the room assignments worked out. Who would you have picked? Nancy asked. One of my friends from the soccer team, Leela said. Izzy doesn't like sports. I have no idea why. She probably likes sports just fine. She just doesn't like them as much as you do, Miss... Let's play air hockey, Nancy thought. Would you say you know her pretty well? Nancy asked. I know enough, Leela said. I mean, she's smart, she's pretty, she's popular, she's always got a boyfriend. That's Izzy. What more is there to know? Well, according to Megan Vargas... Hey, wait, Nancy said. I need to get a picture of Megan Vargas. I was told that maybe you had one? Sure, I have it in my room, Leela said. And I'll give it to you if you beat me at a game of air hockey. Nancy dropped her notebook. Seriously? she asked. You want me to play air hockey again? It's not even that fun. You'll enjoy it more than you think, Leela said. Come on, I'll even give you the first shot. Nancy sighed. On the first shot, she wound up her arm and hit the puck as hard as she could. It went flying all the way across the room and into the supply closet. Darn, Nancy said. She ran into the supply closet to get the puck, only she tripped on it and smashed into the back shelf. Packs of chips went flying everywhere, juice spilled all over the floor, and a key somehow got stuck on Nancy's earring. Ow, Nancy said. Becca, are you okay? Leela asked. I forgot to mention, there's a trick to the closet. You can't see anything inside unless the light switch is on. It's a little late for that, Nancy said angrily. Besides, I don't see any light switch here. The switch is on the outside, Leela said. That's how the black cat was able to lock Danielle Hayes in the closet, then turn off the lights. Ugh, Nancy said stumbling out of the safety hazard supply closet. You'd think the school would have at least done something to warn people about the closet after what happened to Danielle. Sorry about that, Leila said. Did you get the puck? Yes, I got the puck, Nancy said, removing the key from her ear and putting it in her pocket. This time, you take the first shot. Two minutes later, Leila won the game of air hockey, scoring seven goals and ten shots. Nancy didn't have any shots at all. I win, Leela said. You have to beat me in order to get the photo, though. Try again. No, I won, Nancy said. After I got the puck, we switched mallets. That means you just scored on yourself seven times. That's not how it, Leela began to say. And now you'll get that picture of Megan for me, Nancy said. Gee, thanks, you're a friend. Nancy ran away before Leela could object. Chapter 30, The Victorian Dining Puzzle Nancy was now ready and prepared to solve the Victorian dining puzzle, no matter how long it took. She had a menu with ten different items on it. According to the placard in the display case, it was the menu used in a traditional Waverly Academy nine-course celebratory dinner. Crackers? Bologna sandwiches? Consomme? Nancy asked. Wow, this is one fancy dinner. Nancy also had the Victorian dining book, which listed the eight types of knives, eight types of spoons, and eight types of forks. Each piece of silverware had a specific use. For example, the fork with two tines was a cheese fork, and it was used for eating cheese. I guess I need to figure out which utensil goes with which food, Nancy decided. Then use them in the right order? After a lot of going back and forth between the menu and the book, Nancy finally ended up with a list of which utensils to use. The display case had all the different types of knives, spoons, and forks, so she pressed the correct ten utensils in the right order. The amazing 1871 technology connected to the display case registered the fact that someone pressed the proper ten items in the correct order. The corner of the case slowly pushed out, revealing a gold starburst token with a picture of an ape on it. Yes! Nancy said. I did it! 
I got whatever this thing is. It's a good thing nobody changed the display case in the past 138 years, Nancy thought to herself. Just think, if only one person accidentally switched two of the forks, it would be impossible to solve this puzzle. And it definitely was a puzzle. Rita Hallowell's journal talked about eating a celebratory dinner with perfect etiquette. She must have created this device so that whoever found the journal could get the Starburst token. Nancy scanned the journal again. The clue about the celebratory dinner was on the third page, along with the clue about a Dupin gate and other Poe stories. The second page was dedicated to a crow and the reconstruction of the United States. The first page talked about lamps with musical narration for pianos. Nancy scratched her head. She had no idea what those clues referred to, if they were even clues at all. To be honest, she hadn't even figured out the Victorian dining puzzle on her own. She had just let the junior detective task list tell her what to do. Speaking of which, let's see what else I have to do now. Nancy thought, opening her notebook. It was a rather short list. The to-do list. Number one, work at the snack shack. Number two, get the picture of Megan Vargas from Leela. Number three, get the gold token from the pesky white squirrel. Uh-oh, Nancy realized. None of those things have to do with the clues in Rita Hallowell's journal. That means I have to figure out the clues myself. No! Nancy screamed. Chapter 31, Talking to Paige. Okay, Nancy, don't panic, Nancy said to herself. You've deciphered clues left in a crazy person's journal before. You can do it again. There were about six things in Rita Hallowell's journal which could be clues for puzzles. Then again, they could also be the incoherent ramblings of a madwoman. After all, writing about the kind of music her cat liked? How could that be a clue to a puzzle? Nancy sighed. At least now she knew what she was doing. Collecting Golden Starburst token for... well, for something at any rate. And step number one was getting the Starburst token that the squirrel had stolen earlier. Nancy went outside to the big oak tree. The squirrel was up in the branches, playing around. Squirrel! Nancy yelled, Give me back my golden token! Someone tapped Nancy on the back. Becca Sawyer, if you keep yelling at animals, I will give you demerits. It was Paige Griffin, the building monitor. But it took something from me, Nancy said. I need to get it back. Yes, I know, Paige sighed. Casper stole one of my term papers once. I couldn't get it back, so I ended up flunking the class and falling out of the valedictorian race, and it's all that squirrel's fault! That's when I decided to take out all my rage on the valedictorian candidates by giving them as many demerits as possible. So that's why Paige is always so mean, Nancy realized. Unfortunately, the school says we can't touch Casper because he's a rare albino squirrel, Paige said. And we can't climb the tree because it's over a hundred years old or something like that. So that beast gets to do whatever it wants and it's not fair! You hear that, Casper? Paige yelled. I give you ten demerits for being unfair! Hey, calm down, Nancy said, putting a comforting arm on Paige's shoulder. Like my friend George Fain always says, if you think hard enough, you can come up with a solution to any problem. You know George Fane? Paige asked. Yeah, we've been best friends ever since we were kids, Nancy said. How do you know her? We're distant relatives, Paige said. But you've known her ever since you were a kid? How is that possible? The file I received about you said that you've been in France for the past ten years. Nancy was happy to finally learn why Paige looked so much like George. But Nancy was unhappy that, once again... Someone was close to figuring out that she was secretly a detective. It was time to avert suspicion with another one of Becca Sawyer's sassy comebacks. France? More like dance, Nancy said. Because we met at a dance academy? Right, Paige said. It was ballet, Nancy said, her ego deflating. Because... 
Ballet is a French dance. Ballet, more like okay, because dancing ballet is just fine and not suspicious at all? You're acting oddly, Paige said. Well, that's not because I'm secretly an undercover detective who has only been to France once in her life, Nancy said. Because I'm totally a French exchange student, but in any case, I gotta go now. Bonjour! Nancy waved at Paige, then ran back inside the school. Chapter 32, Boyfriend Stealing Close call with Paige, Nancy said to herself, breathing a sigh of relief but I'm pretty sure she doesn't suspect that Becca Sawyer is really Nancy Drew. That would be... Beep, beep, beep. Nancy almost screamed when she realized it was her cell phone. She picked it up and read a text message that was sent to the entire school. Izzy has date for Oxbro Bash. With Leela's boyfriend... Oops, make that ex-boyfriend! Uh-oh, Nancy said. Izzy stole Megan's boyfriend and Leela's boyfriend? Ouch! Nancy decided to never introduce Izzy Romero to her boyfriend, Ned Nickerson. Then, a second text message came in. New French exchange student Becca S. doesn't seem to know anything about France. Is she an imposter? Who is this Becca S. girl? Nancy wondered. That's the third text I've gotten about her today. Nancy decided to go to the rec room so she could talk to Leela about the boyfriend development. It's only fair to warn you that I'm not in a very good mood right now, Leela said right off the bat. Because of the Izzy situation? Nancy asked. How could she do it? Did she think I wouldn't mind if she started dating Jacob? Leela said. My gosh, it's all over school. Did you know she was interested in him? Nancy asked. I'm not stupid, Leela said. I could tell she was on his radar. The way she'd look at him and flirt her brains out with him. I just never figured she'd make a move on him while he was still dating me. I mean, who does that to their own roommate? I know, Nancy said. I'd never do that to my roommate. Not that I have to worry about it because I don't think Corrine has a boyfriend for me to steal, but still, have you talked to Izzy about it yet? No, and I don't think I will. Leela said. I'm just going to act like nothing's wrong at all. You know, psych her out a little bit. Get her worried about when and how I'm going to get back at her. Because I will definitely get back at her. That's a promise. And considering that someone here has sent one girl to the hospital and another girl to psychiatric care, Nancy thought, let's just hope for Izzy's sake that Leela isn't the black cat.